This is another contraflow masonry heater from Finland. It's called a Thule Kivi. It's a, a kit heater. All the parts are uh, come uh, and it's a matter of, of building it from the components. And <clears throat> this is done by an, uh, a Thule Kivi installer, someone that's been trained by Thule Kivi to do that. To show you with uh, with this heater is that there's uh, the, the little bit of maintenance required, um, and a good way to do that. Um, you see at the bottom here. There's two plugs uh, which come out, and um, <clears throat> this this heater is different from the one upstairs in that it has a an ash door. There's no receptacle down below except that little chamber there inside that door that uh, we we open every couple of weeks to take the ashes from the fire out. But what I want to do today is just um, take out the soot doors and that'll give us access to the bottom of the heat exchange channels and where fly ash is going to be accumulating. So I've got um, an inspection mirror here which we'll use. Um, I've got a flashlight. <clears throat> We've got our shop vac here and a dustpan. So I put the dustpan under there just to catch any anything that may have built up and uh, you can see right away that the there is some soot that's collected here. Um, put that off to the side. And now I can look in and see uh, the fly ash that's uh that needs to be removed. Um if if it's been a while since the heater's been cleaned out there might be there might be three or four quarts of fly ash in the bottom here and if you just stick the hose from a vacuum cleaner in uh, that fly ash is gonna overpower the filter and you're gonna probably get fly ash everywhere and the vacuum isn't going to be able to suck so a good a good strategy is to to bring put something in there and I'm I'm going to use this this is a called a noodle brush it's uh, got some light fibers not very stiff you can buy these uh, uh, at hardware stores I bought this from uh, Copperfield Chimney Supply and I'm going to go in to the back of the channel here and turn the vacuum cleaner on So this is all fly ash that I'm I'm getting out of the heater but not vacuuming out. I'm just holding the vacuum hose so that it's catching the airborne fly ash. I'll take another look here. There's not much left now. Now I can go ahead and take the vacuum cleaner. I'm going to use this. put this back. This is uh, this is solid soapstone as well. It's got a little flange on the outside and a 
and a rubber o-ring that's fit into a groove that's been cut so makes a nice tight seal so this is the fly ash that most of the fly ash uh, was able to get out before I used a vacuum cleaner I did clean this uh, these channels out before the heating season and we're less than halfway in so it's a fair amount of uh, fly ash for just a couple of months of burning so we basically do the same thing on the other channel then there's a channel that runs the manifold that connects the two side channels runs along the back of the heater at the floor level and I access that <coughs> from the um, chimney connection I take the chimney pipe off the back and I can I can go uh, reach in with the flexible uh, part of the vacuum cleaner after I've put the noodle brush in and, and dragged out the fly ash in the back you will uh, have to kinda be a little bit of a detective when you're uh, servicing a masonry heater you have to try to determine where all the places are that fly ash has accumulated in the back of uh, of this unit <coughs> the um, my manifold is not it's a blind access uh, the only way to to visually inspect it is is with a, a mirror and a flashlight so that that's going to be the case oftentimes um, is that there'll be places that need vacuuming that are not visible without without your mirror and your flashlight now I can I can um, put the mirror in here and direct it so that I can look at the top and this channel goes all the way up to the the top where there's a capping slab and I can see if there's any accumulation on the channels themselves and um, now these channels are are pretty good um, very little build up on the channels it's a good idea to check them though because it's possible if the owner isn't using dry wood for those to accumulate actual creosote this is a smaller firebox um, so it's a little bit uh, trickier to get uh, the kindling in the paper at the top and, and lighting it from the top but I mean it's possible if you have smaller pieces you can make a little teepee fire against the back wall I'll open the damper and I'm gonna leave the door slightly ajar a little bit more air until the fire gets established this door is a little different has uh, air slots in the bottom we're going to keep those open there's air slots in the ash dump at the bottom here as well which lets air come up again through the grate 